Man, one of my favorite teams for the 2023 college football season has to be the Washington Huskies. I've been a big believer in Kalen DeBoer since his time at Indiana, and because of that, I got to know Michael Penix Jr. pretty well. The guy is an absolute star and could have a chance at a Heisman campaign, and combining that with two insane star receivers, a really talented group, and a favorable schedule, Washington could be crazy enough to maybe make a dark horse run at the college football playoff this year. In today's video, I want to quickly kind of preview the Washington Huskies, talk about why there's so much hype, and we'll give a game-by-game -game prediction, and I'll talk about where I think they'll finish, some of the trap games, some of the storylines, and how I think they'll do. But before we get started, click and be sure to leave a like if you're going to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about Washington football. This team, in my opinion, is just going to be so exciting. I love the style of offense, I love their quarterback, I love their skill players, and I love the energy and confidence this team has. As the Pac-12 is practically falling apart around us, Washington has a chance to make a statement this year. I think they deserve to belong in the same category as USC and Oregon, and if a couple dominoes fall their way, could end up in the college football playoff. Part of me actually believes that. Last year, Michael Penix threw for 4,641 yards with 31 touchdowns and 8 picks. He became one of the best quarterbacks in the country and had the kind of confidence and playmaking ability that can elevate a team to new heights and get himself drafted in the first round. Question is, will he be able to stay healthy? Luckily, Penix is back, and I think he's the second best quarterback in the Pac-12. At wide receiver, they return both Roma Dunze and Jalen McMillan. They are both 1,000-yard receivers, and in my opinion, could be even better this year. Adunze is right now a projected first-round draft pick, and McMillan could be right behind him. With two superstar wide receivers and a superstar quarterback, this offense is going to be fun. At running back, they're going to have to figure a few things out, but luckily, they grabbed two pretty talented transfers. They grabbed Dylan Johnson from Mississippi State, and also got Daniel Ngata from Arizona State. Those two have a chance to be something special, and combining that with a ton of great defensive players, Washington is just purely loaded with talent. Defensive end Braylon Trice is currently projected as a first-round pick, and Zion Tapula Fatui is also supposed to be a second-round pick. They also return two offensive linemen who were supposed to hear their names called in the NFL and have a couple of really good linebackers. All in all, Kalen DeBoer has an awesome roster, a lot of guys should hear their name called in the draft, and they could make a legitimate run at the playoff. Last year, no one expected this. DeBoer was in his first year after coming over from Fresno State, and Michael Penix was an injury-prone quarterback from Indiana. Honestly, most people's eyes were probably on Dylan Morris or Sam Heward, the highly regarded five-star, but neither of those two would play, and Penix took off. They blew out Kent State and Portland State in back-to-back -back games before a Saturday night showdown with number 11 Michigan State. While Sparty ended up being overrated, Penix put on a ton of fireworks, and they beat Michigan State 39-28. This was a monumental win, and they went up to number 18 in the polls. After a blowout victory over Stanford, Washington would hit a roadblock. They lost on the road to UCLA by a touchdown, and then also got upset on the road by Arizona State, and they went from 4-0 to 4-2. Luckily though, Washington would figure it out and have an insane finish to the regular season. They'd come back home and beat Arizona, go on the road and survive a scare against Cal, before they'd have a showdown with Oregon State at home. The Beavers were ranked number 23, and were also playing their best football, and Penix ended up leading them to a 24-21 victory. From there, Washington would go back to the polls, and they would have a huge road victory against number 6, Oregon. This was one of the best games of the 2022 season, and that 37-34 upset put them back in the Pac-12 conversation. They'd kill Colorado 54-7, or they'd have one more regular season game against Wazoo. Penix would end up putting up 51 points against their arch-rival Washington State, and they climbed up all the way to number 12 in the polls for a bowl matchup against Texas. The Longhorns were ranked number 20, and Washington ended up winning 27-20. The Huskies ended up going 11-2 in year one under DeBoer, and then, as I said, returned all of these talented players. They only lost last year's two games by a combined 15 points, and while they did get close and somewhat lucky in some of their wins, they should be able to improve upon last year's record. In terms of their schedule, it's going to be a lot of fun. In week one, they're going to get Boise State at home. If you don't know the name Talon Green, go ahead and take notes. He's honestly one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the country and has a chance to become the best quarterback in the Mountain West. He's gotten significant praise from scouts and coaches, and Talon Green is not going to make this an easy game. While Washington, in my opinion, is the better team, I think Boise State is actually going to put up a fight, but the Huskies will pull away and win by two scores. In week two, they're going to play against Tulsa. This game is somewhat dangerous, as new head coach Kevin Wilson is known for having terrific offenses, so Tulsa should be able to put up a bunch of points and will probably try to match Washington's offense. It still really won't be a game though, as I expect Washington to win by three scores. 
After that, they go on the road to what in my opinion is the biggest trap game of their entire schedule. They have to play Michigan State. This game is at 5 p.m. on Peacock, and I think it's the premier game of week three. I'm personally gonna try to go to it, and Michigan State's gonna be rowdy, they're gonna fill that stadium, and Mel Tucker is looking for revenge. The biggest question mark about Sparty is who their new quarterback is gonna be, but I don't think it's going to matter much. I think Michigan State is gonna match the energy that Washington plays with, and this game is gonna go down to the wire. I would not be surprised if Washington wins, but I also would not be surprised if Michigan State wins. This could be an energetic upset, or it could be a blowout. I don't know, but I am going to put my money on the experience of Washington and say they survive. After that, they play Cal at home, who will have to break in a new starting quarterback, and who I also don't think is going to be any good, so that game will be a win, and they'll get to 4-0. After that, they're going to go on the road to play against Arizona. I'm not quite sure of Jaden Delora's status right now, but he is the most underrated quarterback in the Pac-12, and he put up numbers last year. Jed Fish is slowly building something in Arizona, but losing Dorian Singer to USC was a tough blow, and I just don't think they have the firepower to compete with Washington. It could be close in the first half, but this will get the Huskies to their fifth win. Game number six is huge. They're going to play Oregon at home. If they can go into Eugene and beat Oregon on the road last year, then there's no reason to think that Washington can't win this game this year. Oregon will return Bo Nix, have one of the top receivers in the country in Troy Franklin, and just an absolutely loaded roster. Dan Lanning is one of the top young minds in the game, and this game should be a classic. I think it'll be just like last year, but I think Penix has his best game of the year, and they take care of Oregon and jump into the top five of the polls. This will get them to 6-0 before they play against Arizona State. The most intriguing part of Arizona State this year is that they have a freshman quarterback starting and the youngest head coach in the game. Outside of that, Washington will be looking for revenge after what happened last year, and this game should be over by halftime. The same can be said for Stanford. As well, this game is on the road, they'll probably have a terrible home attendance, will be trying to break in their new system, and just won't be able to compete in this game. That now puts Washington at 8-0. This, in my opinion, will set them up for the biggest game in the Pac-12 in years, as they'll take on an undefeated USC. I think this will be a battle of two top five teams and the two top quarterbacks in the conference. I think this game will go back and forth and be an instant classic, but USC is going to end up winning late and give Washington their first loss of the year. After that, things don't get any easier, as they get Utah at home, who will return Cam Rising, and who will probably be top 25 by then, and this game will also be close. I still think Washington will be eyeing the Pac-12 championship in a playoff spot, though, and they'll just be too good, and I think they'll end up taking care of Utah in that one. This will get them to their ninth win of the season before they finish off with Oregon State and Washington State. Oregon State had a breakout season last year under Jonathan Smith, and this year I don't really know what to expect. They got lucky in a couple other games last year, but I do believe in what Smith is doing, and he has a high bar to live up to. DJ Uyunglele should be the quarterback for them, but I really don't know what we're going to get out of Oregon State. I think they're definitely a bowl team with high potential, but by this time of the year, we'll obviously have a better idea of where they are, but I think Washington is the better team no matter what, and while I think it probably will be a close game, Washington escapes and gets their 10th win of the season. Finally, they finish at home against Washington State, and my goodness, the Pac-12 was just loaded with quarterback talent as Penix will have to face off at Cameron Ward in his final regular season game. Because this game is at home, and because I think Washington is the much better team, I think they end up winning by two or three scores at least, and Washington gets their 11th win. This would put them back in the Pac-12 championship game, where they'd more than likely rematch with USC. That would be an absolutely insane game, and would give Washington a chance to get back into the playoff discussion. At this point, I wouldn't pick them to win that game, but if they did, they would get to the playoff. I have no idea what kind of numbers Penix would put up, but if somehow Washington won 12 games and Penix had semi-decent stats, then he would have a legit shot at the Heisman Trophy. I also think he'll be a first-round pick at the end of the year, and wide receiver Roma Dunze will have a rise just like we saw at Quentin Johnston last year at TCU. Maybe I'm overhyping the Huskies, or maybe I'm being overdramatic, but I really like this year's team, and alongside Florida State and Penn State, Washington is one of those teams I'm going to be watching from afar. Either Kalen DeBoer and this team is legit, and they win 11 or 12 games, or they pull a 2022 Mel Tucker and end up imploding and barely make a bowl game. I bet my money on the first scenario, but what do you guys think? If you're a Washington or a Pac-12 fan, what do you think of this year's team? What do you think of the roster? What did they get right and wrong from the schedule? and what team or program should I take a look at in my next video. Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.